parties involved in the construction industry. You have learned this before, I'm just repeating it in a different way. Uh, basically, you have many players in the construction industry and you can see in other references as well. But in this slide, I use this illustration because uh, I think it includes uh, all the parties, all the stakeholders in the construction industry. So this diagram divides the players into four categories. One is uh, the industry users, the industry providers, industry trainers and also regulators. So if we look at the regulators, we know the government is the one who sets the acts and regulations, policies and all those. So we have different levels of governments. Now we also have standards associations like Malaysian standards. Uh, we have local councils that's under regulate, regulators. And Industry trainers, of course, the universities is the main uh, party in giving uh, knowledge. And we have other research institutions like uh, CREAM under CIDB, um, TAFE, CIOB, they also have uh, trainings uh, and many other uh, um, agencies. Users uh the designers that's the main and we also have the providers the providers are the manufacturers who produce products or um, um, like materials for the construction industry local councils the malaysian government system is divided into three levels namely federal state and local government so the federal government now is um, our government so we only have one federal government but in different countries, they may have two uh, federal governments. But in Malaysia, we, we only have one and we have state governments and also local government. Uh, local governments must bring about changes and economic growth accordingly to become an effective machinery to facilitate national growth. This is microeconomic. Uh, you've learned this in Building Economics Part 6 Diploma. So uh, from community, they contribute to the economics and then it contributes to the state and it, the state will contribute to the country and the country will um, you know contribute again in, in macro economy it's between countries local governments are where the local community infrastructure underpins the nation's economy like I said just now and provides significant support to the state and national development project local government in Malaysia is divided into three categories, city council, municipal council and district council. So the differences in the three categories are as follow. City council. City council is a local government which has been upgraded from municipal council status after having successfully achieved certain criteria. For example, Kuala Lumpur, DBKL and this one is Majlis Bandaraya Ipoh in Perak. Uh, Majlis Bandaraya Ipoh. Bandaraya means city, city council. And they have population exceeding 500,000 people and the annual review of more than 100 million. So the activities, economic activities in Ipoh is uh, greater than other parts like uh, Perak Tengah, and uh, maybe Manjung. Right, municipal council refers to local authority in urban or town centre which has population not more than 150,000 people and an annual revenue exceeding 20 million. For example, here in Perak is Majlis Perbandaran Manjung. Perbandaran is municipal. Dia bukan bandaraya. Bukan um, kalau macam Petaling Jaya dulu MPPJ Majlis, Majlis Perbandaran Petaling Jaya dia punya population um, exceeding 150 tapi tak lebih daripada 500,000 people so from MPPJ they have upgraded to MBPJ now it's Majlis Bandaraya 
Petaling Jaya. So itu salah satu contoh yang dah been upgraded because of the population and also the annual revenue. The third one is what we call district council refers to local authority in rural areas. Um, they have population not more than 150,000 people and revenue less than 20 million. So, for example, this in Perak is Majlis Daerah Perak Tengah. Uh, we are under, UITM Sri Skandar is under Majlis Daerah Perak Tengah. Okay. Universities. Uh, this uh, uh, party under construction industry is the second uh, play is the second group of players in the construction industry. Universities prepare students not only to be responsible citizen but also to become actors and promoters of processes and actions for sustainable development. So basically, in universities, we teach you about construction. Those uni uh, universities that have um, courses or programs related to construction like UITM, we have Faculty of Architecture Planning and Surveying. And UM, they have Alambina, uh, UTM, uh, and also USM, uh, and some other universities, private universities. This is very important in general, and even more significant in architecture and engineering fields, because you guys, those who are in these faculties, Alambina, Bill Environment, yeah? You are the future leaders. You are going to lead, you are going to design, you are going to manage, you are going to supervise. So we, we have to teach you all the best basics. And macam sekarang for uh, BCT 672, kita ajar you about ethics. Uh, universities and higher education centers have different capacities to elaborate and ap apply innovation in them. For BCT, we have innovations. We teach you how to think out of the box. We want you to think out of the box because it, this is construction technology. Because when you make decisions, you have to use things that you already know to make decisions. Uh, you know, we have different types of decision making. Sometimes it has to be ad hoc. It depends on, on, on your own knowledge. Uh, like I have said before, uh, if people offer you, because this is BCT 672, we are uh, talking about professional ethics here. So if people offer you bribery in a different way, uh, that they, they wouldn't say, oh, it's a, it's a bribe, but you know types of briberies and, and whether it's ethical or not, then you make decision on the spot whether you, can, you want to accept that or not. Uh, you craft or you built your own uh, path, right? Uh, universities and the higher education centers have different capacities, I've said that. In the construction field, it is essential to highlight the large difference which characterize the local production, national and regional levels. So we have different subjects to teach you about economics, we, we, we have um, um, I, uh, IBS, uh, to under manufacturing line. Right. So uh, these are the examples of, not examples, these are the ranking of universities in Malaysia. So in 2020, uh, UITM, let's just look at UITM. UITM was 119 uh, but in 2020, the ranking yeah, uh, in Asia. And 2021, the ranking has been uh, announced uh, UITM has increased to 108 uh, in the um, Asia uh, universities dalam Asia and uh, in 2021 uh, UITM has been um, Malaysia's top 10 universities so basically in Malaysia we have about um, 20 public universities and about 41 private universities. So all these universities, uh, we basically are responsible to teach you the, lead, the, the future leaders in the construction industry. So we are the um, important players, the important players in the construction industry. Designers. Uh, designers in the construction means they design either the architecture, the, the, uh, the how do I say? the look of the building or 
the structure of the building. If the look of the building is normally by the architects, the, the, the layout and the uh, flow, ventilation uh, and all those is by the architect. Engineers, they are designing because they design the structure of the building. Column to nak sama ni 250 ke 350 ke bigger or smaller. And we also have issues like over engineering uh, in, in uh, construction industry. Over engineering means they design the structure more than what they they should take. Kalau sepatutnya bangunan tu uh, only need about 350 times 350 columns, but they overly design it to maybe 500 to 500. So some people say, oh yeah, it's good because it means that the building is stronger. Yeah, but why do you need that big? So dia ada benda, dia ada udang di sebalik batu. Why? Why they design more than that? But this issue is very uh, rarely people would like to um, to discuss about over design by the engineers. But during the unethical conduct, because they design um, besar supaya they can get more of the consultancy punya fees like kan selalunya 10% kan dalam ni fees so they can get more than that that is the the like very general apa tu general idea of why they do uh, over engineering tapi dalam construction industry kita tak kita tak berapa nak discuss sangat sebab benda ni We have macam apa lagi, landscape architect, ID, they are all designers. For consultants to work effectively as a team, however, they should adopt collaborative practices as early in the project as possible. So it all depends on the procurement routes or types of uh, tender. You have learned this as well. Macam kita ada uh, turnkey projects, we have di mana susunan organisational structure dia adalah berbeza ada yang konsultan duduk atas ada yang kontraktor duduk di bawah konsultan like this small um, chart I have here on the right below um, you can see under project manager kita ada lead consultant and also contractors at the same level but sometimes it depends on the types of procurement a contractor can be under the lead consultant um, or sometimes the consultant can be under the contractor it, it depends so some of the duties of the designers um, include assisting the client, carry out feasibility studies, uh, advise on the procurement routes, contributing to the preparation of project brief and drawings, um, then planning applications and also ten tender documentation. <coughs> Manufacturer. Manufacturing involves ma manual labor and automatic processes under a turn raw materials into finished goods for sale. For example, we have marbles, cements, um, uh, aggregates. We have even IBS is also considered as manufacturing because you manufacture all the components that in the in the factory and then you transport them to the site. So you are pretty uh, well how do I say, not well versed, but I think you already have that knowledge uh, re related to IBS. Manufacturing the first step in the conventional distribution channel, then in the manufacturing, you also have what we call the supply chain. So the dalam supply chain, they are all construction industry players. Sampai ke tahap ada students bertanya, are the lorry drivers the players? Yes, uh, you know, they are part of the players because they sent the materials to us. We need transportation. Transportation is also under manufacturing. Okay, manufacturers uh, typically sell to distributors, uh, who sells to retailers, and then the retailers sell to the consumers. So these are the layers of um, uh, the supply chain. So supply chains. The more players you have in the supply chain the costly, the more pricey a material will be. Kalau let's say you only have three layers daripada 
uh, distributors and retailers and then you, from retailers you sell it to the consumers then you only have like two or three layers but if you have more dia sub dekat dia dia sub dekat dia dia dekat saya akhirnya you, you because every parties yang you sub tu ataupun dia bagi dekat dia from from the factory you give to the distributors and then distributors kepada re- retailers of course they want to take their profits isn't it so depends on that uh, itulah yang material so sometimes ada mahal sometimes ada yang murah sometimes people say beli barang daripada kilang you dapat uh, murah sebab apa sebab because of the uh, supply chain tadi if manufacturers produce poor quality products their brand becomes devalued they lose customers and they and the ultimately face low sales and poor business conditions in the construction industry of course our aggregate sands they are all natural resources we don't have brand for the um, for all this thing except for the cement we have YTL we have uh, different types of cement kita ada yang yang dah ada X mixture so that's different um, for example tiles so if you have like uh, once upon a time white horse was quite famous until they have now most of the contractors say their quality has decreased so so when they have decreased people devalue their products and so people shift to different tasks like MML and uh, a few others if construction quality is poor buildings are not safe building inspectors may not approve commercial buildings for use and the construction company may develop a poor reputation and lose business like what happened to my house when I did, did renovation do you know the subcontractor he ordered a different type of sand do you know basically in general we have two types of sand satu yang pasir sungai satu yang pasir um, uh, sungai yang pasir lombong so he ordered lombong sebab lombong ni like, lebih halus you have learned this in materials if I'm not mistaken masa diploma so jenis pasir tu kan dia ada bentuk so pasir lombong ni dia ringan bila dia mix the concrete I was like nampak senang sangat dia mix concrete ni and normally pasir lombong ni we use for plastering and pasir sungai we use for concreting so bila I tengok dia bancu tu dah last kejap and it was dia punya mixture tu dah tak betul dia punya ratio of mixing uh, less less cement and more sand so bila uh, dah siap I dah tegur bila siap kita tenang pun dia boleh macam hancur dan masa dia bancur tu pun kita boleh nampak ringan because pasir lombong kalau pasir sungai dia bancur tu berat because they mixed the concrete manually so I could see right uh, with that I have described all the four main parties in the construction industry the manufacturer the universities the local government the governments the regulators yeah and also what's the last one the mm, designers so we have designers universities uh, regulators and also providers right thank you that's all for now